All right, next up we have Laurent Gautier with uh, RPI2. I hope I didn't mangle it. No, that's okay. Good pronunciation. So that's a project to uh, embed R into Python and to allow uh, polyglot development, which means so you may have a developer that is more a statistician, would write code in R, have an analysis, and uh, there is a need to make an application, and Python is a pretty good uh, glue language for that. So the way it's working is R is embedded in a process, or it, I would say embedded as a process into Python, and it can be called as a Python library. Everything that is in R is exposed to Python, just like you would be native Python. So the, the way it's working is, if you have an R object that is a matrix, there is like an empty shell exposed to Python that has subset methods that make it like a matrix. Same for vectors. There is a binding to NumPy, so it's possible to alias that to NumPy IDs. There is no copying needed. I'm pointing to the exact memory region in the R segment that corresponds to the data. It's also possible to call R functions, just like they are Python functions. And uh, trickier, it's possible to pass to R Python functions as callback. There is a mechanism to loop back to Python if needed. This is an idiom uh, used very often in R, where one would say apply to a matrix M across all rows function F. So in that case, either with RPy2, you write the R function and you, you parse it and you evaluate it, or here you define your callback function in Python and have this magic function called rternalize. It's a pun on internalize and rternalize. It's internalized to R and you can apply that. This is Python code and you pass a Python function that has been rternalized to R. So R will call back Python from itself. So uh, this way it's also possible to make uh, R frontends if needed. It's currently used in the IPython R magic where you can switch from Python to R and back. They are using this as a backend. So I have uh, class hierarchies. I don't know how much time I have left. Um, here it's uh, how I'm bridging the uh, memory management systems. Python as reference counting plus garbage collection. R as only a garbage collection, so I have an intermediate dictionary. It's some kind of memoization. I'm not exposing or building the shell twice if it's needed. I'm doing a bit of bin counting. Not completely necessary, but easier for debugging at the moment. But it's, it's fast enough, uh, which means if you want to access R objects from Python, you're currently faster than using it from pure R because Python is faster, it can go about 10 times faster. Here I have an example where uh, I'm using random forest. It's a popular method in machine learning. Here this is R code, something a statistician would write. Here it's uh, getting a plot for a uh, variable importance. Uh, here it's making it as PNG. And here is a Python part. It's probably much too small for the camera, but the Python developer is just calling up what the statistician uh, has written. Super easy to install with uh, PIP, I mean, as much as packages are easy to install in, in Python. Here I have example of use. Uh, people have built a GUI, a desktop uh, client for automation of price setting for a travel agent. People have been scheduling sibling thread. So there is a statistical computing of sibling thread and dispatch jobs uh, using Python. There is a visual control of landing uh, of fruit flies it sounds silly, but fruit flies are not well known to for having a big brain, uh, yet they never miss a landing. So people have been monitoring their flight patterns, and they've been using RPy2 for the, uh, for, for the uh, statistical analysis. And there was a talk at PyCon uh, today where people fight cancer using Python, and they use a lot of uh, RPy2 to link to R. Okay. That's pretty much it. And at, least, and at least some of these authors are genuine statisticians and aren't, or at least weren't, Pythonistas? I would say hybrid. Uh, in that case, it's actually was presented at the Use R conference. So they are mostly statistician, but they had to develop a desktop client. And Python, I guess, was a tool of choice. Uh, here, they're more computer scientists. So maybe there was an association between statistician and a Python programmer. This is really the idea to sort of bridge teams. It's people with very different talent, uh, statisticians and programmers, and to allow the development of uh, application very quickly without the need for defining an interface, without the need for uh, actually having a web services or sort of things. Thank you for helping Python reach into yet another new world. Thanks. All right.